if you invest in what you're familiar with right like in what you feel comfortable with so most of us like uh in the u.s like in even like even like in, in in professions uh we're only familiar with stocks with mutual funds with the uh, st stock market right like and that's the way we invest but we don't know that there are other alternative ways to invest and maybe even safer and maybe even where you have um more more um uh, more um ways like to to take advantage of that Welcome to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Show. Whether you are an active or passive investor, we'll teach you how to scale your real estate investing business into something big. Harry Nima Segarra is a Peruvian physician, entrepreneur, and real estate investor. He helps other doctors invest passively in real estate. Harry, welcome to the show. Hey, Sam. Uh, thank you so much for having me today on your show. The pleasure's mine. Harry, there's three questions I ask every guest who comes on the show. In 90 seconds or less, can you tell me where did you start? Where are you now? And how did you get there? Yes, absolutely. So uh, we started about like five to six years ago when we moved to Dallas Fort Worth. Uh, we have been here in the U.S. like for 10 years already, but we were moving every two, three years. So uh, we were uh, very interested in real estate. And uh, when we arrived to Dallas, uh, we decided to start investing initially in single family homes, uh, long term rentals. And then after uh, a couple of years, like uh, three years or so, um, we're getting like already a couple of uh, uh, units and, and they're our belt and it was more and more difficult to manage. So we continue our education around that time. And uh, we decided like to jump into uh, commercial real estate, which is where we are now. Uh, so commercial real estate, mainly uh, apartment complex indications where we uh, work together with other uh, sponsors, experienced sponsors, and uh, we buy apartment complexes uh, with the help of our investors. And um, how did we get there? Uh, with a lot of effort, a lot of time, education, uh, networking. And, uh, and, and I always say like, always like at the end, uh, taking action, right? Like we, because all the prior ones like are like are important, but if at the end you don't take action and you, you, you don't get anywhere at the end. Now you're a full-time physician still though, right? Yes, that's correct. That's how, correct. How did you find that time to educate yourself and to then take that plunge into bigger assets? Like what was the, the thing when you said, Hey, I'm going to set aside X so I can do Y. Tell us about that. Yes, yes. And uh, I can tell you, I mean, it's not easy, but uh, you just have to be intentional, right? Like, so you just have to find the time to do it, right? Like, and, and, and I can tell you, well, like, I'm a full time uh, physician, my wife is also a physician, and she was working also full time until just recently until November. And uh, you, you can imagine like, both both uh, with a full time jobs and with two kids, uh, six and 10 years old, and doing real estate at the same time. <laughs> it was not an easy task. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, like, like again, we, uh, we, we found something that we were very interested, that we had a passion for it, and we decided to go for it. How many single family homes did you guys have before you said, man, this just isn't working? <laughs> so we have uh, already like uh, nine units uh, in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And it, which is like where, where we live right now. So we started like, uh, again, like uh, five years ago or so. And we started like acquiring like every couple of months until we reached like the, the, the ninth uh, uh, property. What was the turning point when you said, man, I just, I can't do this. There's got to be a better way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. I mean, we, we were doing good. I mean, I mean, I mean, actually, and that was the reason we were growing so fast. And like, like the thing is that, again, like the more uh, single family homes or units you have, the more difficult it is to manage, even with a property manager. And, uh, and like, and, and I always mentioned this, like, and every single decision, uh, all the responsibilities and liabilities are specifically on you right like and and we found ourselves like every single week like talking with our property manager about like small and big problems that we could have uh, in every single unit yeah yeah absolutely so talk to us about that transition then to multifamily. how did you get involved in your first deal and what would you suggest to somebody else maybe in your same position 
Yes, yes. So, uh, like, uh, the uh, this this is like the story I was telling you about. Like, so we we found ourselves already with nine units, and uh, it was uh, difficult to manage. It was taking out like already a lot of our time, and we found ourselves that we were not able to scale that that quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always heard hear the stories about like uh, people who invest in single family homes that at some point in their fifties or sixties they are already with eighty units or or one hundred units, and they don't know what to do with them. <laughs> and then like they just need like to and load them like very very quickly or like a like a discount so we decided to continue our education at that point like again was like about like four two years ago um and uh and, and start going like to to meetups to conferences to uh to listen to audiobooks so i live like um about half an hour from from where i work uh, uh in downtown dallas so so that helped me like uh to to listen to podcasts like like yours, like uh, to to listen to audiobooks, and again, like I, I just continued that education, and it it brought me to uh, multifamily apartment complexes. Now, apartment syndications. I know you you said this early on was that you have found great sponsors to work alongside. If somebody wanted to go out today and they said, "Hey, you know, I want to find a good sponsor in the multifamily syndication business," I mean, there's a lot to choose from. How did you select the people that you and ultimately ended up working right alongside? Yeah, and and that's very important, right? Like because like a, a multifamily is a team sport. I'm I, I'm I'm always say like uh, I'm part of like a team that that is doing already this, right? Like and and the reason is because I'm a physician. I'm a full time physician, so I wouldn't be able to do this by myself at all, right? Like because just trying to find apartments trying to do the underwriting trying to acquire them trying to manage them is more than a full-time job right like and and there's many people doing this already many many people with a lot of, with a lot of experience and many people who are doing this for many many years so i would do, be doing a disservice to my investor or the people who are trusting me in trying just to do this myself so i was able to partner up with with uh different sponsors like initially i actually uh joined like a a mentorship group uh here in like in dallas forward and that gave me like again like uh, uh that i i became very comfortable in being like in a group like with abundance mindset, right? Like so, and and we know each other, and we know each other for some time already, and uh, we we share like uh, our underwriting, and we share our notes and all of that. So it's it's very important always like to know who you're working with, to ask for for references, to ask for again like prior uh, projects good and bad experiences right like because again like we 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 all know from people like when when they tell you about like the great experiences and great like the return on investment but it's more important like to know when they have had a problem and how they managed it that's that's exactly right you know, it reminds me of a saying my dad always told us he said you know it's not if you'll have problems it's what you do when you have them so <laughs> yes you know finding finding out that information i think is uh is really helpful with your sponsor so you found a good sponsorship group and what was it that you were able to bring to the table you know that they said hey here's a way that you can plug in with this harry we'd, we'd love to have you on board what did you bring to that general partnership that made it valuable for everyone yes and and this happens to i believe to everyone who starts in real estate or specifically in multifamily uh we we start in the space very excited and we think we can do everything we want to learn everything <laughs> right and uh, and at some point we need to be honest with ourselves right like and we need to find the best thing that suits us and and the and and the field that we are stronger at right like so i'm i'm a physician i have a good network of like of people who have seen me in real estate already for a couple of years have family friends uh, colleagues uh people in like the, the medical field so uh they they were uh, looking at me when i was doing already single family homes and long term rentals so when i told them like uh, uh, that i was switching into multifamily they were on board and and they were uh there to support us and and the company mm, got it that's uh that's really cool let's transition this conversation maybe a little bit and we'll talk about what it's like to bring on other physicians i know you said here that uh, there in your bio that you spend uh, it sounds like quite a bit of time helping other physicians passively invest in real estate what what have you built either either um like I guess, t tell us your process for how you bring a physician on, maybe that, that doesn't know anything about real estate, and you educate them such that they then feel comfortable investing in real estate with you. Yes, and and we start from the fact that again, like 
you invest in what you're familiar with right like in what you feel comfortable with so most of us like uh in the us like in even like even like in, in in professions uh we're only familiar with stocks with mutual funds with the uh, st stock market right like and that's the way we invest but we don't know that there are other alternative ways to invest and maybe even safer and maybe even where you have um more more um more um ways like to to take advantage of that so like um what uh what 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 is important is again like uh many, many physicians like us they they work very hard they they go through a long process of uh training but at the end of their careers they don't have enough financial education again like and and we try to 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 help them and and to bridge that gap like in terms of just just showing to them that the other's ways to invest right like and again like they don't necessarily need to invest like uh in in syndications but 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 again they 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 may be like interested in being more active again like in single family houses or doing something different it's just again like to have the options for them right right and so how do you i guess how do you approach that conversation with your colleagues is it something where they just come to you and say hey harry i hear you're investing in real estate i'd love to learn more <laughs> yes yes so, so like again like we we um we're working towards our financial independence and that's how we 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 approach this conversation with many of our partners right like so you would think like again like as, as physicians high earners uh we we have a very comfortable life and we we get a uh, good income however we get taxed very high so 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 that's one of the problems that we we all have right like and also we're kind of trapped like like again like we depend on one stream of income right which is our work if something happens to us we would be in in serious trouble so so that's why i sometimes we, we, we talk or discuss about these things about like what would happen if something would have happened to me for for example dur dur during the pandemic right like so i would be in serious trouble because i don't have any other source of income so that's when you start thinking about like that you need to start investing somewhere else other than the stock market Right. Yeah. Uh, assets that produce an income is, uh, is something we talk about quite a bit. And I think it's even becoming more relevant. You know, today we're working exactly. on uh, what, June 14th. And we've just watched here recently the bloodbath in the stock market. And <laughs> Oh, you know what? Yes. I, I want to buy things that, that no matter what the stock market is doing, it continues to produce an income. And I think that's... Um, that's a really key point that I hadn't really thought about, you know, and uh, when it comes, you know, for, for those of us who are in the business, yeah, I've got multiple sources of income, but as a physician or as a high income earner, there's just, there's a single, there's check, a new one. single yes. source, right? Yeah. Getting, getting that diverse, uh, diverse income stream is, uh, is certainly a, a, a need that it sounds like you're solving. That's, that's really, really cool. I love that. Tell us your story a little bit of coming to, from Peru then coming to the you know becoming a doctor in the united states and then investing in real estate like was it, what what was that journey like <laughs> that was was very interesting <laughs> so uh so we came here to the states my, my wife and I, I i about 15 years ago so we we're, we're both are from peru we both uh, did our medical our medical school over there wow. so we we were actually friends for 7 to 8 years until we decided to come here to the us we started dating and then we got married uh and so we 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 came here uh we did our training uh again like we were in different states because of the nature of our training we were in pennsylvania we were in Virginia for for the fellowship, and then we end up like in South Texas initially uh, in a private practice uh, set up like uh, for a couple of years. And after that, we 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 decided to came to uh, to to Dallas and finally to settle here. So we were always in, interested in real estate, and actually uh, the, one of our first encounters with real estate was like uh, when I was when we were moving to to uh, Richmond. Virginia for my fellowship. So we it was around 2011 and we needed like to find a place to live, right? Like and and we didn't want to rent initially. So we decided like to buy like a small townhouse. It like it was a short sale actually. So <laughs> and we didn't know anything about short 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 sales in that moment. So we thought it was like like actually like a short process, but actually it was a long process and like a very long process. There's nothing like, short about a short sale. Yes, exactly. So, uh, and and at the end of the three years, we decided to sell that property, and uh, we were very nicely sort sort surprised that it had appreciated 
very good and then like in in south texas we uh we at some point we were planning like to stay in that area so we decided to buy a piece of land to make to maybe to build a home there but at the end we changed uh, our plans and we came to dallas and we we when we were selling that piece of land it also had appreciated like a good amount <laughs> so we we were really primed like to 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 get started in real estate when we decided to come and settle here in dallas and I think that's the thing that you said early on is that that for you, one of your keys has been just taking action. It's finding a way. It's finding the time. It's it is not a no excuses approach to getting it done. Like you set your sights and then you go and do it. So I think that's a, a really compelling story. You know, for a lot of people, they, they they think they feel overwhelmed. You know, it's like, gosh, where do I start? How do I start? You know, they 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 see all the obstacles as opposed to the opportunity. Uh, and and I and I always love the stories where people come come to the United States. They work hard. They figure figure out how to get it done. And I think that's uh, it's always a good reminder that it's still possible uh, even today. So that's awesome. Absolutely. Thank yes. You for, thank you for sharing that. One last question here for you before we sign off. What are some mm -hmm. risks that you may see in multifamily or in real estate in general right now? And then what are you doing to maybe position your portfolio in such a way that it, you, you maybe don't don't take the shock that some other people may be, um, you know, some risk that people may, may be taking on? So do you, do you see any risks right now in the in the commercial real estate space? Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, we, we have seen like just lately, like the hike in the rates uh, for, for, for everything, right? Like for residential, but also for commercial real estate. I mean, actually, it has uh, hit more in the residential space. It's it's very funny, like uh, that, that, that that again, which means that people see more risk in the residential than in commercial. Commercial is more uh, again like recession re resistant, right? Like so, um, I mean, like uh, we 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 see that that these rates may continue to 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 continue going higher, right? Like so, like the the thing that we need to make sure is like to do a, a very conservative underwriting, right? Like again, and what means a conservative underwriting is like to do what we call a stress test uh, and putting ourselves in the worst case scenario, right? Like in terms of the rates, in, ter in terms of occupancy, in terms of the rates that until now in the last five or ten years they have been great and they have helped like so most of us like to get great re returns for our investors but again like we need to be more uh more more into this like analyzing all these deals now like again like uh that you need to uh look for your investors in this sense right right yeah absolutely absolutely do you think here's a here's a here's a, a, a subjective question do you think rent rates will continue to climb have they reached a peak where are we when it comes to and again obviously this is very location specific so this is a general question but we've seen just enormous rental growth rate in the multifamily market where is it going yes it's very difficult to see in this moment like and 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 the thing is that again like they have been raising with inflation too right like and also with with the, with the salaries too like in some areas there's a discrepancy like like between like where the areas where the people is moving in and uh, and, and where the people are moving out right like so um like 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 again we see this this discrepancy and and for now we're assuming that it's is going to continue to grow but it's very important to do in our underwriting to not expect that explosive growth like in the next couple of years and that's the way that you should uh be doing a conservative underwriting right yeah i think i think that's key you know over time i think no matter what we will see you know rents continue to climb but i think you know potentially Sounds like you, you're saying we should be underwriting little to no rent growth just to be conservative. Yes, yes, or, or like in the three to four percent at most. Right. Right. Very cool, Harry. Thank you for taking the time to come on the show today and really just tell us your story, how you got started in real estate, what you've done to build your portfolio from single family into uh, a large multifamily portfolio. The get it done, um, you know, just just take action attitude, and you know where where and how that has brought you to today. So certainly appreciate it. Love your story and love your enthusiasm for real estate and what you're doing. Uh, is there anything else you'd love to share with our listeners here before we sign off? I know, Sam, like again, thanks so much for having me on your show. I really appreciate this and I really enjoy our conversation. Absolutely, Harry. If our listeners want to get in touch with you or learn more about you, what is the best way to do that? Yes, they can always reach us at our, uh, our website, like uh, which is uh, nimaequity.com. Nima is N as in Nancy, I-M-A, 
youtube.com or like we also have a youtube channel where we have like a free education about multifamily real estate investing awesome harry thank you again appreciate it have a great rest of your day thank you sam